Okay, for this next one, we want to set it up with exponents so we can use the inverse power rule. We're going back to that again. So here's how we're going to rewrite that one. We're going to do uh, 1 half x to the negative 1 half. That's a square root on the bottom, so we can write that in as x to negative 1 half. And then the rest of this is the same. Now we're ready to apply our inverse power rule. Raise the power by one. If I add one to this, I get positive one half divided by one half. So one half will cancel. And then this one, raise the power by one, divide by new power. I get three over three. That's going to cancel also. And so then I get x to the one half minus x cubed, and I'm going between zero and one. Okay, so now I got it down to this point. I have my antiderivative putting in my top and bottom ones. I have uh, one goes in there, so I have one to the one half minus one to the third. And then now I'll do that with zeros in for both of those, which that's just gonna turn into a zero. So I get one minus one here, which is zero. And I get minus zero, which means I get zero as my answer. So the question is, well, if I'm finding the area underneath the curve, wouldn't I actually just get a natural number always when I always have an area? Well, let's take a look at the graph on this one because you'll see why it cancels out and gives you a zero. Okay, so if you were to, to graph this one, we're only looking between uh, zero and one right here, so this is gonna be a one. What happens is the graph kind of looks like this in a way. So I've got this area right here. If I'm only gonna go between one, then I have this whole area here. This keeps on going. Actually, it's going to go, it keeps on really going past this, but we're only going to look at the portion that goes up to a 1. And what you'll notice is that these two areas are exactly the same. So if I just did from 0 to 1 half, I would get a value. And then if I go from 1 half to 1, I would get a negative value. So when I add these together, the areas cancel themselves out. So I've got a positive area and I have a negative area and it cancels. So if you're given this kind of problem where it's already set up as an integral, when you work it out again, your answer uh, could be zero. So we've looked at now it's possibility where you could have just a negative area if it's all down below, a positive area, or you can have an area of zero. So with that, since we're talking about the zeros here, let's take a look at another example. Okay, I'm gonna do these problems at once. And it may look like they're exactly the same problem and you'll get the same answer, but it's not the case in this one. That's why I want to focus on these because depending on how the problem is worded, you're going to get two different answers. Let's just do this one first. So this one is our regular antiderivatives we've already been working with already. We're going to take the antiderivative of sine, okay, and that's going to be negative cosine, and you're going to go between 0 and 2 pi. You put that in, you're going to get negative cosine of 2 pi minus negative cosine of 0. Cosine of 2 pi, that's, the, that's going to give you negative 1. And I have plus the value of cosine 0, that's also 1. And we get a 0. If you wanted to take a look at the, the graph here, then what it looks like between 0 and 2 pi is this. You've got some area above and you've got some area below and they're canceling each other out. Now, this problem is worded, it's got the same function, sine x, and you're still going between 0 and 2 pi. However, it's got this word here. It says find the total area between the graph over this interval here. What that involves doing is breaking this up into two separate intervals. So you're going to break it up to where the positive and the negative areas split. So in this case on the graph, that's going to be at pi right here because this is going to be at 2 pi. So if you're going to do it this way, here's how you're going to do it. You're going to put absolute values around each of the two integrals. You're going to do one integral from 0 to pi of sine x dx plus, you can do another one with absolute values. Integral from pi to pi over, pi to two pi, and that's sine x 
dx. You're doing that separate. You're doing this one and this one. So what's going to happen here is you're going to get an area for this one. This one, normally it would have been negative. However, because you're talking about total area, a sense what it's saying is, what's the total re area of the shaded regions together? And in that case, you're not considering this as a negative area at all. You're actually considering them both to be positive. So let's do each one of these uh, separately. If you were to work the, the first one out, again, you get negative cosine is the same thing again, but we're putting in zero and pi. So we're gonna do top one minus the bottom one, minus cosine, minus negative cosine, I should say, cosine of zero. And then for this one over here, you're gonna do plus. Okay, so again, you get negative cosine is the antiderivative. We're putting in the two pi here, negative cosine, two pi, and then minus negative cosine of pi. So let's add, and then we're doing absolute values. Don't forget those for each. We have absolute values around each of the integrals. This one we're going to calculate. Okay, you get absolute value. Uh, cosine of pi is negative one, and then you have minus or minus minus is plus, and then this is a one inside there. This other one over here, you get cosine of two pi is just one, minus one, and then plus. These two give you a plus here, and then cosine of pi is a negative one, and you get that. So this gives you negative negative one plus one is. Uh, 2, and then this here gives you absolute value of negative 2. So normally these would have canceled out if I didn't have the absolute values, but I get 2 plus 2, which is 4. Okay, so even though I'm working with the same function here, I got two completely different answers, and that's because you have to look at how the question was originally given to you. If you're just doing this interval and it's set up as an uh, set up uh, inside the integral symbol, do it all out just like that and you'll get your answer. However, if the question asks you to find the total area between the graph of that, then we have a special procedure for doing that and we had to work through all that to hear.